It's about a chap called Michael Brassett. A chap called Nat Edwards used to run the goods yard. And Nat said to Michael, go up to O's and get an ounce of the strongest pepper you can get. So we come back with this pepper. He said, what do you want me to do? He said, well, we've got a lot of mice here. He said, so put you some red bricks down. He said, and sprinkle the pepper around the bricks. He said, what'll that do? He said, well, the mice comes up, smells the pepper, sneezes, bangs his head on the brick and kills itself. He said, but whatever you do, don't kill the boss's white mouse. All right. So in the evening, Nat got out of a white mouse, banged it over the head, took it to work, put it beside the brick and told Michael to go and check on the bricks. So he goes around and there's this white mouse. What do I do? What do I do? He said, you better go up and tell Boss Picker what you've done. Goes up, knocks on the door. Boss Picker said, come in. What is it, Michael? I'm sorry, Boss, he said, but I've killed your white mouse. What bloody white mouse? I ain't got no bloody white mouse. They was all on the platform <laughs> laughing their heads off. Yeah. That's a few years ago now. When my children, you know, eventually went to school at Trewidland School, which is just near St. Keeping Station, they used to take the train from Coombe and walk up from, from St. Keeping up to Trewidland School. And, um, and then when they used to come home sometimes, they'd get down to St. Keeping before the train had gone down to Loo. Right. And the, the old guard used to say, oh, you hop on while we, oh, and we take yeah. you down for a ride down to Loo and back again. Yeah, so they were allowed to do that. <laughs> well, yes, I mean, it was very, you know, it was yeah. very easy then. Yeah. And, uh, and then we were all local people, obviously, on the train. And, uh, and then when Johnny, that was our, my, our youngest, he was the last one to go to, to children's school. The others had left. And uh, if he was late or... Uh, or if he if perhaps he wasn't going that day, I used to have to go across to the to the yeah. train because they'd stand there hooting their horn <laughs> until he came. Really? <laughs> and then oh. if he wasn't going, I used to have to. Oh my dear, is he not well or what is it? Is oh, he not amazing, going? Isn't it? Yeah, because they yeah. all knew them so well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they were really part. like the railway children, I suppose. Yeah, our yeah, children. Real part of the community. Yes, yeah. yes, and there was a community. Of course, there was a community of Moors Water when we uh, earlier on, but um, yes. that had gone in the early sixties. But yeah. I children were going to school sort of um well johnny uh, margaret was born so i suppose from the early 70s yes yeah. Yeah. and then um then um that's what we used to do with their children the children used to go down to loo for the day on the line i used to just pack them a picnic and they and they used to hop on at Coombe and walk down to the beach at Louvre because I, I was too busy and I, they I could They went by go. themselves? Well, yes, they were yeah. perfectly all right by themselves back yeah. then. I mean, you know, and there was three of them and very often they'd be joined by one or two other pals. Like, you know, yeah. So there'd be a group of them and they'd go down to Louvre. Oh, <laughs> and lovely, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and then they'd hop back and then they'd hop back home. It was lovely, really. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It was, it was, we had lovely times. Yeah. Every little halt you came to, you met all the locals because well, in that right. time yeah. there was always locals jumping on and off the trains, yeah. like you know. So and you knew them all by heart, like you know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I knew one little girl there. I struck up, you know, a, a nice little romance with, like you know, <laughs> uh, just outside a sand place she lived. And every time I was on, I was firing like she would wave her stuff at, wave her handkerchief at the window, like, you know, and I would be waving back, like, from the foot, like, you know, oh. things like that, like, you know, which yeah. you never forget. Yeah. So, and then, like, say, you, all, a lot of the, a lot of the signalmen and the, the shunting staff and all the platform staff, you knew them so well, like, you know, and always shared stories with them. But it was great, it was great um, companionship with the drivers, like, you know, they're all good as gold, like, you know, yeah. everybody got on well together. Yeah, it's a real team. And like yeah. you say, when like, really, um, when it's terrible, atrocious, raining weather, like, you know, you'd be getting wet and you'd be putting the, 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 um, the tarp on over the back of the engine, like, to sort of like, keep yourself dry, like, you know. And it was, it was really roughing it with the wind blowing, all the rain in and things like this, you know. But it was all good fun, yeah. yeah. Just the, the very brief daughter of the station master, and then that's it. So, uh, <laughs> that's amazing. one of them, yeah. So, that was the station master, right? Yes. Lou. 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 Yes. Fantastic. The youngest and the last. Was he? Yes. Yeah. He was, yes. Yeah. So, so, when did, how, when did he start that? Did he 
He started elsewhere. So he, yeah. start, he started his career in the railways when he was about 14. Gosh, yeah. So Kelly Bray and Plymouth during the war. Yeah. And then as a booking clerk. Yeah. And then um, went to Oakhampton. And then got married and moved to Bude. Was a booking clerk up, up at Bude. Gosh. But also worked around different other stations like Otterham Station. And, yeah. Um, is it when the Wenford work, line, you know, oh, the yeah. Bodmin went yeah. yeah. Worked on that sort of uh, for a little bit, but mostly imbued. And then saw an advert for Station Master's Post in Lou oh. and thought, yeah, I'd like to work there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So you moved. So, yeah, we moved down. So I was about mm, three and a half, something like that, when we moved to Lou. Um, I mean, the other time we would have got on the train with Sunday school outings, we would have gone down and um, then on the main line down to the other branch lines as well. But uh, yeah. Can you tell me more, a bit more about the Sunday school outings? Well, that was kind of the major highlight of the year. That was a, a big trip that we used to go on the Sunday school outings. I mean, Lou was a, sort of one, we, the classic one we would have gone down, and then as we got older, we would have gone uh, further down to Foy on that line or down to, to Falmouth on that, that little branch line. And, What's the eyes? So that was a, sort of a, the highlight of the summer, as it were, you know. What did you do on the trip if you were coming down to Lou, for example? I think it was just we went on the beach and, and um, had a paddle and, and then ended up, ended up having fish and chips and coming back. Um, I know we, we were all given these special little tickets. We didn't have our own tickets. They were printed, you know, because we obviously had a concession to go down or some sort. But uh, they, they were, it was definitely proper um, carriages. No, it wouldn't, you know, we didn't use the, the cattle wagons or anything like that. I can't remember that far. Well, my name is Paul Corrin, and I live at St Keen Mill, formerly known as Lametton Mill, which is just behind St Keen Wishing Well Holt. And as a family, as of, as of October this year, we have been there for 80 years. My father bought the mill in 1938 from the previous miller, Leonard Lander, whose family had been there since the 1850s. And uh, we were in business milling, animal feed, until 1966, and then we opened the Musical Museum, which I ran after Dad's passing full-time until, no, until September 2012. But we still, I still have the Wurlitzer organ there, and uh, I restore wor organs. At the moment I'm restoring the organ that used to be in the Regal Cinema Torquay, which I actually used to go and play around 1970. Nineteen seventy to about seventy five. Um, we we as as teenagers you used to use the Lou Valley line as our, our escape route out to the oh, big city. Right. Yeah. Um, so so that, you were coming from Lou or from Lou to right. Plymouth, yes. Oh, right. Or, or yeah, yeah. not so much to Liscard wasn't the attraction, I'm afraid. It was Plymouth that was yeah. the attraction. So there'd be about a gang of us, I don't know, ten of us. We used to jump on the train. And the trains then were the old style ones that didn't have a corridor. No. So you're in compartments which uh, you don't yeah. see uh, you don't see now. So yeah, so I guess from about I was ten in nineteen seventy, so I'd say mum and dad probably let us let me go on my own to Plymouth when I was about 11 or 12 really? I suppose yeah, yeah. which was actually quite you know that's yeah. quite young actually yeah. Yeah. Um, in the knowledge that we were uh, it was a group of friends yeah. we sometimes used to go up to the football matches we just got to Plymouth Argyle on the train oh, yeah. as well yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course the cinema was in Plymouth so you know, it, it was the big shops, it was a real attraction for us teenagers. So I'd say from about 1972 to 75, 76 was... Uh um, that was, we'd jump on the train on a Saturday, usually a Saturday morning, go up to Plymouth, either go to the football or go around the shops or go to the cinema and all pile back, uh, back again. I eventually succeeded getting a job as what's called a leading conductor down at Parr and finished up the next 14 years down there uh, doing guards work, which is part of the uniform wearing now and uh, do the local branch lines, including the Lille branch line. Um, 
and then uh, finally retired officially six years ago. But since then, it'd be nice to be working at Lou Railway Station in the summertime and still doing some survey work now and again, things like this. So uh, the, uh, the old dog's not dying yet, he's still keep on, still to keep on going. Yeah, well, my gran used to take us when we were summer holidays every Monday, it would be loo day, so we'd go down to the station. Um, but it's great because we'd sit behind the you could, in the days you could sit behind the driver with the glass, then the door into the driver's cab, and they'd let my brothers go in and pretend to drive the train. So they'd be sort of pulling the handle and thinking that they're driving the train. So it was all exciting to see if you could get that chair. <laughs> <laughs> See if they do that these days. <laughs> but they did that every Monday then? You went down we used to go down every Monday, so it was always a fight to see if you could get those seats behind, um, behind the driver. <laughs> Brilliant.